Kafu Shiveni. Von Azeach, Herr Mechilos, Miss Mora David. Amorai has in a noi, be no hagigi. Akshi for the Kol Shabi, Malki for the Hoi, Kielech, yes, Palo. A noi boker tishma koli, boker ero, hocho, batape. Kilo, eo, hopez, resha, tog, lo, yegur, horo. Lo, yisatsu, holy, menegere, necho, sane, so, kol, polo, yoven. Tiabe, dovre, hozo, vish, domi, mumirmo, yisoi, varanoi. Vani, bro, hastho, bobe, seho, estach, lo, hecha, kocha, hobiro, seho. A noi, no, heni, visit, koseho, la man, shoroi, hai, shalafon, ai, dar, keho. Kiem, befi, yun, no, no, kibom, havu, vos, keva, posu, achogonam. Show them Yahlikun. Hashim Melohim, he blew me what so say, and Bro Pishayem, he had the Hemo, Kimaru Bok. Yes, Miko, Koko, Sevo, Leolam, your name of a song, say Halimu, the Alps of Ho, Avesh Meho, Kiatoto for Ex Harikano, Katsina Rotson, Tatrenu. I'm a seven giras of Minis, Miss Moradovid. A noi vi albi abkhur sochi khedi vi albi khavos khur shashveni Khaneni yana noi ki umlo lo ni rafein yana noi ki nifhalu atzumoi Nafshi nifhalu miyod vi atar noi ad mosoi Shubar noi khaltso nafshi yoshi eni laman khazdeko Ki eim ba mabesek kho bishol miyod eloch Egati ban khosi yaskeh mkholoi lo mitosi bidimosi arsi yamseh Eshe shomi khaseni yaskeh bkhol tsaroi Suri many call polio, Venki Shamaranoi call Bihi Shamaranoit Kinosi, a noit philosi cock. Evo Shuvi Bohalumio, Koloi Boya Shuvi, Evo Shuroga. She gave on the David Asher Soloi, Aldivre, who spent you mini, a noil high Bokoka, Sisi, or she enemy called Road Five at Sileni, Penitro of Kiari Nafshi, Porefe Masil, a noil high Mosisi, so Simiasho, Bilbohapoi. In Gavalti Shomai, Roh Vachal, so sorry, he come. Irado for Yev Nafshi, Viasse, Vimos, Loretz, Kayo, Yuvodi, Lefo, Yashkin, Selo, Kumarano, Biapeho, Inosibia, Vosoro, Uro, Eli, Mishpotsi, Viso, Vadas, Lumim, Tosovaveho, Violeho, Lamor, Shuvo, Arno, Yodin, Amim, Shoftani, and Anoi, Kitsitki, Husum, Yoloi. Yigmar Nora, Rishoim, Sukhone, Tarik, Vavo, Helibos, Uchloyos, Elohim, Tarik, Magini, Al Elohim, Moshia, Yishrelev, Elohim, Shofet, Tarik, Vyazo, Em, Bechol, Yom, Im, Lo, Yashuv, Harbo, Yiltosh, Kashto, Dorach, Vechorneho, Lo, Hechin, Klaim, Oves, Chitzov, Dol, Kriim, Yisvol, Hine, Yechab, Yeloven, Vechor, Omo, Vyolad, Shekar, Bor, Koro, Vayach, Perehu, Vayipo, Beshach, Asifol, Yashuva molo brosho v'yal kod kodo chamos v'yered Ode aranoi kitsitko v'azam roshem aranoi elyon Here to uh, pay our covet achron, our respects to Henshalaya Vasiliezer, Susan Gottesman, a blessed memory. It's really the end of an era for the family as we come here today at this occasion. When I think back about Susan, Susan was someone who I always thought was a very uh, a classy, a classy woman, a woman of elegance, very sociable person, beautiful smile outgoing, positive, that's on the outside. But the truth is her inside was very similar as well. She was what we call tocho kibaro. Her inside was like her outside. She was a devoted wife. She stood behind her husband David, always at his side, a true Ashes Chayel. So the persona that you saw on the outside was in fact the same person who really was this way on her inside and her pinimi inside as well. I want to share with you, I just heard the other day a fascinating thought that I think is so apropos for a woman who, for anyone who went through the war who was a survivor of the Holocaust. I think it puts things in perspective as to the kind of life that she lived. The 
Pusik says in, in uh, Parsha Shmini, if we remember the story, the two sons of Aaron HaKohen were killed, Nodam and Aviu. And afterwards, the Pusik says, Vaidaber Moshe el Aharon ve'el el Azar ve'el Isamar banav hanosarim. He refers to Hashem. Moshe speaks to Aaron and the two remaining sons. Who were the two remaining sons? Elazar and Isamar. So the obvious question is, there were four sons. Nadav and Aviu, Elazar and Isamar. So if Nadav and Aviu died, there's two more left. Why was it necessary for the Torah to describe them as the remaining sons, the two remaining sons? Fascinating answer, and that is that Elazar and Isamar realize for the rest of their lives that they were carrying the torch. There was no longer another than of you. Aaron had four sons. Two of the four perished. From now, for the rest of their lives, they recognized that they were going to carry the torch of the leadership of Kahuna, being, in a sense, the sons of Aaron. And this is true, so true, of people who went through the Holocaust, the Sheriff's Haplata, the survivors, who really uh, many times must have looked at themselves and said, we were blessed, that we were Zoha, that we survived, unlike so many, unfortunately, who didn't. And to be able to use that to rebuild, to build a family, to build a business, to build a career, to build a future for themselves, for their children, and for their grandchildren. That's the kind of life that Susan lived, devoted to her children, to her grandchildren, loved them so much but very specially, the special devotion that she had for David, Oliver Shalom, how devoted she is to, was to him, always by his side. I was thinking on a personal level, thinking back, you know, I think your father passed away a little under 10 years ago. It was the end of 2008. And I don't remember how much longer after that that your mother moved, not much later, that she moved to New York. So you really haven't seen her except for a few Greenfield Simchas that I saw her at, and maybe once or twice on the phone when she was still able to... Uh, to communicate over the phone, but I was thinking back to some of the earlier years. I really had a close relationship with them. I used to go visit them in their home on University Parkway, always made to feel very much at home. They were uh, very warm, engaging, opinionated. Um, I can remember sometimes sitting down in the living room having a conversation that went on and on and on because of certain things and opinions. But I have to also give, if I may give, I think I, th I, think I mentioned this maybe at, at your father's Leviah, at his funeral, um, Kar Satov, because there were times, sometimes, I'm, I'm a little older. I always say I think I'm getting older faster than I'm maturing. But I remember there were times when I came into Shul really worked up about something, issues and cautious in the community, things like that. And your father would come over and say to me, Rabbi, calm down, calm down. And it worked sometimes. But uh, there were, they both had a tremendous sense of seichel, seichel hayosher. And again, they both shared their opinions. And your father may be more opinionated than your mother was. Your mother went along with whatever your father said, but always with that tremendous smile, that joy, that, that simcha, that positive attitude, considering what they've been through to rebuild and to create and to be able to have the nachas of children and grandchildren there's so many people who cannot say that after the war, that they were able to, A, survive, and B, be able to put together such a beautiful family. Thinking back, I remember the time that we had a Hachnasa Sefer Torah that they did for, uh, in, in, in memory, many of people. And I remember we had the, the beautiful Simcha. I was shared in the office the other day that uh, I remember this is the only time I ever drove a Lexus. Um, your parents' car was parked outside, and I went to your mother, and I said, can I move your car? because we needed to dance outside. She said, sure, here are my keys. I cherished the moment that I actually drove a Lexus. <laughs> but it was a special feeling. It was their car. But they very much made me feel like, like almost like a son. They were good to me. They helped me. They were supportive of me in the years. Again, the nine, 10 years have gone by, so I really didn't keep the cash or keep the connection. But many of the people from that generation at the youth center who I think viewed me as their child, but treated me very respectfully, but I really viewed many of them as like my own parents. They really were, didn't have my own parents at that point. They were very, very special to me. So again, it's hard to say goodbye. It's the end of an era for the Goddessman family. And, uh, but she lived a special life, a beautiful life. She had a lot of nachas, a lot of joy, a lot of simcha that she put into her life, into everyone who knew her, in her smile, in her elegance, in the way she carried herself, in her friendliness, in her socialness, people who were social friends. That's something that those that, that are still around to remember, because she had lived many of her generation will have those memories, God willing, for years to come. I'd like
like to ask Robbie to say a few words, please. Thank you, Rabbi Bernstein. Thank you all for coming, especially in this cold weather. For us, it's cold. For you, it might be normal, but it's cold. And especially for some of you who attended the funeral for our dear friend Linda Steiner earlier today. You have come for our mom who left Cleveland almost 10 years ago, as Rabbi Bernstein pointed out, to spend time near Debbie and me. But mom always thought of Cleveland as home. I also want to point out that my sister Debbie Zanger took care of mom, and mom's arichas yomim is due to Debbie's care and devotion. I also want to quote my daughter Orly, who said that Anyu, and that's what her grandchildren, who are all here, called her, left this world in her sleep on Shabbat. It was such an Anyu move to pass with no muss, no fuss, not to bother children or grandchildren with DNRs, DNIs, or hospital visits. Anya never wanted to bother anybody. As my mother would say, health is the most important asset. Mental and physical health is more important than money because without it, life is meaningless. It is ironic that in her golden years she would be afflicted with dementia, but let us focus on her earlier years. And I'm going to give a little bit of background because some of you may not know her background. She was born in Shat Ruihe, Hungary, near the border with Czechoslovakia. When we visited Ruihe, I had the driver cross over the border back and forth since both Hungary and Slovakia are members of the in EU. It was an easy drive. Not so before World War II. It was a difficult drive and you could, even carry, you could not even carry currency of the opposite country. My father used to say that someone from the Czechoslovakian side used to meet the Hungarians with Czech money so you could continue on your journey. My mom was born to an upper class family. Her father, Lajos Rosenberg, was a well-known attorney who actually headed up the Udenrat in town during the war. Her mother was a fancy lady and my mother's memories of her childhood being spent with governesses. My mom's, our mom spoke German and Hungarian since there were no Jewish schools in the area and that is very strange today. There's so many Jewish schools available in Cleveland and New York. My mother went to Catholic school, and World War II started when my mom was only 10 years old. She had the distinction of going to Auschwitz twice, and she remembers Dr. Mengele. Typhus and the fact she was only 14 or 15 years old wiped out most of her memories of the time, but she spent March of 1944 to the end of World War II with her cousin Erzika, who was 10 years her senior and Erzika remembered much of their trials and tribulations. Erzika spoke of the daily appelt where they would line up and be counted. Erzika rubbed cold water in my mother's face to make her face rosier and more apt to show that she was alive. Unfortunately, it was at the second selection in Auschwitz that my mother's mom was killed by the Nazis because that her, they saw that her mother's mom did not have rosy cheeks. My mother wanted to go with her mother, but she would have been gassed to death Erzika cleverly remembered that she never saw again people that went in that direction, so she persuaded my mother to come with her and live. She would see her mother later. Erzika saved my mother's life a few times during that period. From Auschwitz, the first time she was sent to Plozhov, which was made famous in the movie Schindler's List, and I used to ask her, was that movie real? She saw the movie, and she would reply that the movie did not show enough killings or hangings. At Plozhov, all she did was move rocks from one place to another. After the second time she went to a transit camp at Auschwitz, she went to Greenberg, where she worked on parachutes for the Germans. At Greenberg, she got a little to eat as the Nazis wanted their slaves to produce parachutes and knew that if they did not feed them anything, they would die. She entered the war in Bergen-Belsen, where ultimately she was saved by Raoul Willenberg and transported to Malmö, Sweden. There she had paper clothes, which were burned every day so that the typhus would not spread. And even though she was 15 years old, she looked like four years old. So she was adopted by Jules and Bebs Berman, who had no children, and she lived a life of high society for a while because Jules was a leading entertainment reporter who was based in Stockholm in Paris. At the time, she met Josephine Baker and Orson Welles, among other famous people. Her life was a yo-yo. She went from being born into a prestigious family to losing her father, losing her mother, losing her only brother, to living the high life in Stockholm. But her life was not complete, and she knew that there were very few Jewish boys to marry in Stockholm. So she moved in 1951 to Cleveland, Ohio, where she lived with her aunt who had moved to Cleveland in the 1920s. It is there she met my father, and they married in 1952. My sister pointed out that um, uh, my father
father had three conditions that he gave to her to get married. One was that she keep kosher, one was that she keep Shabbos, and one was she played bridge. And she played bridge very well. Many of you remember how she used to go to shul together with dad, and Rabbi Bernstein spoke about it. She loved young Israel and expressed that love by dedicating a Torah and the Oron, her, parent, her parents, and my father's parents' memory. She used to say that she could not imagine while in Auschwitz that she would have a loving husband, two loving children, and seven loving grandchildren, and that had anyone told her that would be her future, she would have thought them crazy. Another Auschwitz survivor has left us, but she built a few beautiful life in Cleveland and later in Englewood. Our memories of our parents and grandparents is all we have left. She never complained, and that is a lesson we can all learn from. May her feeling that the cup is always full stay with us forever. Anyone who knew my young you knew just how special she was. My siblings and I were lucky enough to have spent many years of our lives living just a few minutes away from Anyu and Apu in Cleveland. We were so often over there, it felt like a second home. Every Thursday, my Anyu would pick up one of us from school for an overnight that we all cherished. When it was my week, our first stop was always the convenience store where I was allowed to get one pack of baseball cards, maybe two if I really pushed her. She definitely helped spark my love for the Cle Cleveland Indians. I'll always remember the first time Anyu took me to an Indians game. I couldn't wait to cheer on our team with her, but it didn't take long for me to realize Anyu really didn't understand how baseball worked. <laughs> um, but that was Anyu, yeah, she suffered through a ton, um, and uh, she just wanted to make me happy. On these special Thursdays, we would drive to the lumber yard where I would get to see how hard my upu was working. He would take me around and meet the guys while I quickly snuck about 10 domino sugar cubes he always had sitting on his desk. I think they were 20 years expired, but I don't, I don't even know if sugar expires. But um, anyways, no kid can say no to a little sugar rush. Uh, after dinner, we would all hang out and play high stakes gin rummy, where despite my non-existent winning, non winning streak, I always walked away with the pot. Danielle and I would sometimes compare our records and winnings, both realizing we were severely outmatched. That was on you, always wanting everyone to be happy. Anyu would not only do would not only do anything for my Apu, but for her grandchildren as well. She used to take me and my siblings to Discovery Zone and would even go down the slide with us. She would walk through the mall with Danielle for hours just to make sure she was able to find something special to go home with. Every summer, Ari would move in with Anyu and Apu and spend time before and after camp. He loved going bowling and to the movies with them, and Anyu always volunteered to carpool him and his friends around town. Talia loved her time learning Hungarian and Swedish over a cup of coffee, and Anyu would have laughed knowing Talia really picked it up. Talia really acquired Anyu's knack for baking and treasures the recipes Anyu brought with her from her own childhood. Anyu was a role model to all of us and instilled in us the importance of patience and dedication to the ones you love. Her heart was truly committed to my Apu and her admiration for him knew no bounds. There was nothing she wouldn't do for him and she did everything with a smile. We are so grateful to have witnessed her love for Apu and their love for each other. I thank Anyu for inspiring Danielle and myself to find spouses like Emmy and Mike who exhibit that same unconditional love that she had for my Apu. Anyone who knows my mom knows how close she and Anyu were. Our whole lives we've learned from our mom how to be a kind, loving, and caring child. Anyu and my mom were best friends and had a very special relationship that we all admired. We can only hope our kids will like spending time with us as much as my mom enjoyed her time with Anyu. Anyu was also a very optimistic person. For someone who endured all that she lived through in her early life, I never heard her complain about anything. Her glass was always half full, even when everyone else's was empty. She was extremely grateful to be alive and surrounded by family and would always make a toast to express her gratitude. 
So here's to Anu and for everything you taught us and to everything you were. We miss you already and we will always love you. Okay, please rise. Okay, I'm Ali Rachman. Meo mole rachamim, shochein abame romim, hamate menucha nechoino, al kampe ashechino, the mahalos, kedoshim utarim, kazor, rakia mazirim, esnishmas, and shalaya baseliezer, shalcho, liolamo, babur, shanach, to be spalim, alas kras nishmasa, big anain and temenuchasa. Lo chaim bala rachamim, yasi rabbe seser kinafav li olamim, vitzrar vitzrar rachayim es nishmasa, alunoi hu nachalasap, sunuach v'shalom al mishkava, v'noi mar, amen. You be seated. So we will be going to the Young Israel section of Zion Memorial Park for the Kura, and then the family will be returning to the home of Ronnie and Rena Greenfeld, 2549 Lafayette. There will be Mincha this evening at 5.10 and then another Shachris tomorrow morning um, at 7 a.m. At the different points, the family will be heading back towards New Jersey and finishing the Shiva up in Englewood, I guess. Okay. Okay, we'll just do this. <laughs>